Good morning. It's a frosty morning. Uh, Wednesday, November the 3rd. It's about, I don't know, 9 a.m. We're in the dryer shack. Uh, dryer ran all night. Worked flawlessly. We're just doing a quick calibration to make sure our moistures are right. And then uh, we got a big field to do today. Well, it's not big, but it's far away and it's 80 acres and we like to get it all done in one day. So I think we can do it. Uh, Dad and Todd are just getting the grain cart and combine fueled up and windows cleaned off, ready to go. We're going to head those down the road and then um, probably come back. We'll grab two trucks and then they'll get started harvesting. And then I'm going to head over and pick up some reinforcements. Old start for you guys. It is three. A mix of sun and clouds tomorrow and a high of nine. I'm Matt Weavering. And that's how you know how cold it got last night. That is ice sitting on that tarp, melting off. Reinforcements have arrived. So I picked up a third truck, um, borrowed it from my neighbor Brian, thank you very much. Big shout out, big help. Nice old 89 Pete, runs like a dream. Another three axle trailer, so should be pretty good shape for today. This field's our farthest away, so, and my, as you know, other Peterbilt isn't done yet. So Brian was nice enough to let us lend us that. And hopefully we should be able to stay ahead of the combine all day with the little bit further drive we have so the guys are here working now dad and i came out to this field we have a nice laneway all the way around it but on the one side it's really good normally a lot of vegetables grown in this farm from uh, tomatoes peppers edamame beans you name it it's been grown here and it's a big 200 acre piece We've got 80 acres of corn here this year. There were some edamame beans and some tomatoes on the rest. But we had some really bad flooding this summer. We had two, two big rains. I think the first rain here, they got nine or 10 inches overnight. The next one, they got another five or six. So, you know, the fields dried off pretty good, but dad and I came, we put some crushed asphalt on the laneway, there's a load here and a load up there. Got it all leveled out, there's a bit of a water hole. Make sure the lane's good and solid. And this is one of the fields. This, this farm was flooded end to end, front to back. And I bet in the middle of these, uh, well we have cover crop there now, there was probably three feet of water, so. Pulling up here, you know, the other day and this morning, there's actually where this, these two fields meet there is water in the middle here was right on the edge so I know it's gonna be a little bit wet in through a few areas in here but hopefully we can uh, you know have a good day and, and get combining and, and get this all done in one set one shot so so it's turning out to be a pretty uh, pretty good day so far things are running fairly smooth uh, this is my fourth truck I believe uh, we got the first 40 acres done. Um, the yield isn't great, but it's better than we expected. You know, in the summertime we went there after the rain, we thought for sure the whole crop would be a loss. And, and there's actually really no drowned out spots in the whole field, but it has affected the yield. Um, the, you know, the plant's a bit thin, the cobs are small. It was under stress for a long time. But hey, like, you know, 170, 180 bushel, we're pretty happy with that for uh, how it looked a long time ago. And these are these are the reasons why you have crop insurance. So anyways, uh, yeah, it looks like sunny skies in one direction and dark skies in the other. It looked like snow clouds again. Hopefully we don't get much of that. It is a bit sticky in the field, a little tricky getting out with the truck, but uh, so far so good.
Todd and I switched off for a little bit. Reed came and took over for the cart. I had to get caught up on a few things. So, Todd's hauling a few loads in. The wet tank is almost full, but the field's almost done. So, both good things. I think I'll uh, jump in with them when this load's empty and I'll go back and we'll get a couple trucks brought home when, uh, when they're full. See the gear jammer himself in action. No pressure. We got the strobe on. Party lights. Watch out, this guy's strobes are on too. Bicycle Willie here. Whoa! He's all over the road. Jakes, come on. Fix the spring. There we go. Hold on. Tear him again. Not bad, not bad. Kind of a cool sky right now. Look at that cloud shelf. That's awesome. kind of a uneventful video I actually should have been filming uh, we got done all of the harvesting for the night we're just finishing putting the last of the trucks in I wanted to switch to a different bin uh, to give the bin I've been drying in all day a break and we'll dry in this next bin all night I switched it turned it back on and uh, I guess I was feeding the corn in too fast it's still a learning curve and um, plug the blower so you know now I'm learning the bugs what it can and can't do with this new dryer um, <clears throat> probably won't happen again it wasn't a big deal Todd and Reed were both there probably took five minutes um, got her got the pipes on clogged got her running again but just one of those things. Luckily, I wasn't by myself. It is a big job to unplug it. The pipes are heavy. You gotta, you know, if you don't want to make as big of a mess, you gotta lift them up, dump them in a wheelbarrow. Otherwise, it's just a big mess on the ground. You gotta scoop up later. So thanks for being there, Todd and Reed tonight. That really helped. It's a big um, weight off my shoulders. Got it running again. But as far as the automatic control of this new uh, Super B dryer starting to work pretty good i'm getting it figured out uh, we're getting uh, pretty consistent moisture i can basically let it run all day and just uh, i calibrate it once or twice per day if we change fields and it's a different moisture and it you know or the temperature there's a big swing i'll, I'll calibrate it other than that pretty true kind of fluctuates uh three degrees above or three degrees below what you have it set at all day and uh, that gives you an average temperature of whatever your set point is so right now corn's a bit drier it's in the 19 
percentile, 19th percentile, percent moisture range. So uh, I have it set at 16.3, hoping to get at least a point of dry aeration. If I get less than that, I'd be happier. Um, I, I sh I'll know, you know, next week we got some corn to go. We're going to ship and I'll, and I'll have a better view of how much dry aeration I'm getting. Before on our old dryer, we ran it manually. I could control the temperature and I knew, Hey, with this much temperature, I can, you know, I know for sure the temperature it is outside, the temperature that the corn's coming out at, I can get X amount of dry aeration. Now, it kind of controls the uh, the temperature and the speed automatically. So sometimes it'll be pretty low temperature, and then I, you know, I should be adjusting my set point accordingly. But I think I'm being a little bit too cautious. So time will tell. It's all a learning curve. It's all working very well. I'm pretty happy with everything so far. And yeah, today was today was uh, I'm not gonna say it was a breeze, but today was pretty good. We you know did 80 acres. That's a pretty big day for what we do. We're not the biggest farmers around, and uh, you know didn't even really fill the wet tank all the way. So it should run out tomorrow. I'm guessing around 11 o'clock in the morning. Hopefully we get harvesting before then. If not, not a big deal. We'll get to the next field and uh, yeah. So that was day eight in the books, wrapped up pretty smooth. Thanks again. Todd, Reed, coming out and helping. My dad, everybody, you guys liking, commenting, subscribing, that's freaking awesome. Hit the bell, give me a thumbs up. We'll catch you on the next one.